Hey guys, it's Mo with Mujuk, and welcome to the second installment of the Zen Mo podcast, the only podcast in the world where we cover polishing the diamond and enlightening the mind. A book where you learn to find inner peace, true happiness, and also learn to work and live for the benefit of others. Now, fall is just around the corner, and as the phrase goes, and the sun took a step back, the leaves lulled themselves to sleep, and autumn was awakened. It is time for all of you to once again go on this spiritual journey to awaken yourselves and find true happiness. Now, before we move on to polishing the diamond, I'd like to talk about uh, the most dysfunctional family that you can find in the cartoon world. The cartoon world, you say? Some of you may have guessed the answer, and you are correct. Rick and Morty. So Rick and Morty, it's an animated TV series that follows the crazy lives of Rick Sanchez and Morty, his 14-year-old grandson. So Rick, he's portrayed as an alcoholic and this mad scientist type of guy. So imagine uh, constantly muttering under his breath about quantum physics, white frizzy hair that's always unkept. Uh, he's constantly seen wearing a lab coat. And of course, he's always carrying a bottle of whiskey. And... Uh, his grandson, Morty, is the complete opposite from Rick. He's quiet, he's anxious about life, and to be quite frank and excuse my French, but he's pretty dumb. So the two are truly an unlikely pair, but they end up going on all of these galactic adventures, traveling through infinite universes and infinite timelines, and in some episodes they end up fighting evil versions of themselves from different parallel uh, from parallel dimensions, they sometimes fight these alien giants, and in one episode, I believe they even traveled inside the body of this rotting corpse to fight off this microbe colony. So, sort of like this, uh, Rick and Morty, it's full of insane ideas about quantum mechanics, it's filled with crazy, it's filled with crazy, uh, violent action scenes, blood and gore, all of the good stuff that you would find in more of a, an adult cartoon. But let's talk about the relationship between Rick and Morty for a second. So Rick and Morty, they love each other, obviously, as they're related by blood, and families should love each other. But Morty, he always finds it a little hard to open his heart fully, 100% to his grandpa, because despite uh, Rick taking him on all of these adventures, he's quite abusive. He suddenly, he, sometimes he goes in a fit of rage and he throws things at Morty. Sometimes he beats Morty up. Sometimes he leaves Morty at the hands of these alien invaders. So of course, Morty, despite the fact that he loves his, he, despite the fact that he loves Rick, he still has a tinge of dislike and hatred towards his grandpa. These small stones sort of like my childhood bully, that are slowly building up and building up. Now let's talk about Rick. Rick, everybody seems to hate him, right? His family seems to hate him. He's notorious throughout the multiple galaxies for being pretty rude to everybody that he meets. But I believe that Rick, he hates himself the most out of any character that exists in this TV show. He's constantly trying to be better, be, be a better family man, He's trying to unlock the secrets to the universe. And now Rick is such a compli complicated character in the way that he has such a well balance of good and evil inside him. He's the smartest man in the universe. Yet the one thing that makes him human, that doesn't make him a god, is the fact that he has to bow down to alcohol. And so this is a beautifully created character, and the dialogue, sometimes it's a little harsh, but I believe it's all in good fun, and I, rec I definitely recommend all of you to at least, at least watch one episode. If it's, a little too, uh, if it's a little too crazy for all of your tastes, then that's a pity, but I believe that Rick and Morty, it doesn't only teach you about uh, the infinite universes that exist out there, it's not all about comedy, it's all about family. It's all about learning to let go of the small and large stones in your heart and learn to practice the flow of uh, happiness and constant positive energy. For today's chapter in Polishing the Diamond, I'd like to talk about practice that flows like water. One summer, the day after it had poured with rain, 
I was washing the farming tools I had used the day before in the mountain drain. Master Kim, who was watching from close by, saw how small and large stones inside the drain were obstructing the flow of water and asked me to pull them out. When all the stones had been cleared out, water gushed forth with a roar. The master then spoke. How is the water? Isn't it flowing much better than before? You need to see others as Buddha. Then your practice will flow like this water. It was a Dharma lecture he gave, knowing how my mind was full of dislike and hatred at the time, unable to surrender my discomfort towards a particular person. One day, the master telephoned early in the morning and asked all of a sudden, Today is the National Tree Planting Day, so aren't you planting any trees? We had recently planted some cornelian cherries at the monastery, and to the practitioner who was wondering if we were supposed to have planted anything else, the master spoke again. You need to plant a tree of reverence, a tree of devotion in your mind. Now this last sentence, it leads me to a phrase, an age-old saying that goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the second best time is today. Now what this, uh, what this old saying and what this chapter is talking about is that so many people, they focus on the past. They focus on what they could have done 20 years ago. Maybe if I studied a little harder, maybe if I made that good investment, or maybe if I said yes to that beautiful woman, I would be a lot happier where I am today. But what practice that flows like water and what this saying, the best time to the set, the second best time to plant a tree is today. They are both saying that when it comes to finding positivity in your life, when it comes to finding inner peace and letting go of your dislike and hatred for others and yourself especially, there is no such thing as time. The past, present, and future, time is irrelevant to how you find happiness, to how you find positivity in your life. So many people say, oh, maybe if I did that better, then I would be happier today. Or maybe if I, if, if, if I work hard today, then maybe I can be happier in the future. No, this is not the way that you're supposed to approach life, and especially not approach spiritual enlightenment. When you are trying to find inner peace, or true inner peace, let go of time. Let go of the worries of time, because, think about it, the past that you lived, it created who you are today. And without the past that you had, you wouldn't have these thoughts that you are having. How do I become happier? And don't focus on the future too much, because if you focus on the future too much, you lose sight of your goals that you have to do today. And don't focus on your present self, because the present self is who you are right now in this moment, and you should be constantly putting effort in that moment. So, in my opinion... And in this book's opinion, there is no such thing as past, present, and future. The past, present, and future, they are not separate pieces of Play-Doh, but they should be molded into one big ball, where you look at it from afar, and you try to analyze how. How do I let go of my discomfort and dislike and hatred right now? Right at this moment, not for my future, not for my past, but so I can do so I can do my work, so I can do my studies properly at the moment. So, that was Practice That Flows Like Water, and this was the second installment of the Zenmo podcast. So please, uh, listen, share with your friends, and drop a like if you're not too busy, and I shall see you all in the next episode. Until next time.